Hello everyone, my name is Aaron Lankry. I'm the rabbi in Kilas Orachaim, Muncie, New York. And I'm really excited to share with everyone some words on the parsha or on the holidays that will enlighten us and give us new meaning and, and clarity of our daily activities and of the Torah's lessons. Parashat Ve'et Hanan. Very challenging parasha because Moshe Rabbeinu spills his heart out 515 prayers to Hashem. Please, I want to go into the land of Israel. I want to be part of the Jewish people for all eternity. I don't want to be stuck in the desert. Okay, I made a mistake, but I'm begging you. I'm pleading with you. I'm praying to you. And how many prayers did he put in? Chazal tell us the letters of the Etchanan equate to the number of 515. And Moshe Rabbeinu consecutively put in 515 prayers to express to Hashem, please let me in. And Hashem responds in a very, very interesting manner. Rav Lecha, it's enough! It's enough! Don't talk to me about this! Well, why can't I talk about you about God? God, I was praying. Um, and what happens next? Go upon them onto the peak of the mountain and look in the north, south, east, and west. <coughs> and you'll see with your eyes <coughs> that you won't go over this, this, this boundary, the Jordan. You gotta stay here. You know, it's, I find that very fascinating because somebody really wants something that's 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 dear to them. They, they want to buy a sports car, for example. And they have the money, but let's say their father doesn't let them have it. You can't have that car. I don't want you to have the sports car. But dad, please, I'm buying my own money, please. So after they fight for a day and they argue it out, the father says, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to appease you. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna buy you a picture of the sports car. You can hang it out in your room. It's gonna be a massive picture. Are you kidding me? It's only teasing me more. Well, she's praying to go into the land of Israel. He wants to fulfill the mitzvot. He wants to be part of the Jewish people. He doesn't want to be out of the camp. He doesn't want to be out of the nation. And Hashem says to him, Stop talking to me about that. You'll understand. Go upon the mountain, look, and you'll see. You can watch the video of what will take place in the land of Israel. And at the end of Devarim, in the Bizot Bracha. The Torah tells us that Hashem put him up by Al Moshe, Marvot Moav, right? Al Har Navo, he went up on, by Arvot Moav on top of the Mount Navo. And over there he saw Ad Hayam Acharon, Rashi in Chazal tells us, Yam, the last ocean, but until the last day, every event that will take place to the Jewish people, Moshe Rabbeinu saw on that day. He saw the building of the first temple, the destruction, the temple, the second temple, the destruction, all the exiles, the Holocaust, everything that took place to the Jewish people until the Messiah comes, Moshe Rabbeinu witnessed it. And that's what he actually saw on that day. And therefore, Moshe Rabbeinu held back and he didn't continue to pray. What did he see that triggered him and gave him the understanding that he should stop praying for this outstanding desire that would be beneficial for himself personally to go into the land of Israel. And it's a very fascinating insight and it's the core, it's the centrality of understanding the, ex the possibility of the Jewish people to exist in exile. You see, what defines a nation as a nation? Generally, it's its boundaries, its borders. A nation comes into their border, it's an act of war. But in more modern times, you take a guy from Ireland or from Italy. I, I met those guys that came to move to Brooklyn. While they're in Brooklyn, one generation, two generations, they're no more Italians. They're Americans. They're Brooklynese. They may have pasta on Wednesday, but that, does, that doesn't make that They consider themselves Americans, and if they have to go to war in World War II, they'll fight Mussolini. Who's Mussolini? I'm American. How long were you American? You were American for 40 years. How long was your ancestors Italian? 500 years. So what makes you American? 
Once a person leaves his country, becomes part of another country, they adapt to the realities of that country and they become loyal to that country. How many Mexicans, how many Africanos, how many Haitians have moved to America? And they're Americans today, right? They may have traditions, but the second and third generation, it's gone. What defines nationality and um, commitment to that nationality that so much of, of our army today is built upon all types of immigrants from other nations is because they've, they've adapted to the reality that they're part of America. Jews are also part of America. We were also thrown out throughout the diaspora. But what defines us as a Jew? It's not the land of Israel. It's the Torah. And it had to be that way. Because see, what happens is, if you take a Jew and you throw him out of Israel, if the land is what defined him as his individuality and his nationality, then now that he's out of his land and he's in Babylonia or he's in Persia or he's or he's any other part of the world, he should become that individual. I'm Persian, leave me alone. I'm Roman, leave me alone. I'm Greece. But what defines us as our nationality is the Torah, this little portable thing that we carry it with us. You became a nation upon this day. That was by Matan Torah. Where was Matan Torah taking place? In the desert. As a result of that, our nationality and our recognition of, of being who we are is not bound to land, it's portable. Moshe Rabbeinu understood that if he would go into the land of Israel, then the definition of the Jewish people would be, we're part of the land of Israel. And if we have to go into exile tomorrow, we lose our identity. Hashem says, Rav Lecha, that's enough for you. Go up upon the mountain and see with your own eyes where the nation of Israel is going to go into exile. And they need to adapt to the reality that their, their national identity is not subject to land. Otherwise, we would have been lost in the, throughout all the exiles. A national identity is defined by Torah. And it's portable. It comes with us. And therefore, Moshe Rabbeinu understood that it's time for him to succeed and pass over the leadership to Yeshua and to step down. And you find something very fascinating. The next mitzvah right after this event that takes place is the mitzvah or the Isur called Baal Tosif. The mitzvah of don't do mitzvot that are not prescribed to us. If you have tzitzit or four corners, don't add a fifth corner. Because whenever you add on something, you're really destroying. And that's the essence of the lesson of Moshe Rabbeinu. He wanted to go in. Hashem says, stop, because if you pray one more time, I will let you in. But at the end of the day, that will be d destructive for the national people, for all of Israel. Your presence in Eretz Israel will be destructive because when they need to go into Galut, they won't have the fortitude. They need to understand that their national identity was given to them in the Sinai. Their leader that established them as a nation was in Sinai. They're in exile. So when they go back into exile, we never lose our identity. Today we're still in exile, but we haven't lost our identity. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you for watching. Please click right over here to subscribe to our other videos that will be coming shortly. Thank you.